my name is Michael. Um, I was 48 years old and had not been feeling well for possibly six months. And learning that I had diabetes was, was just a real shock to me. I, everyone else that knew me uh, would say, well, your whole family has diabetes. Why is it such a shock to you? But being healthy or thought I was healthy at the time and I was always physically active, I ate well, um, didn't have many vices. Uh, for me to have diabetes was just not possible, but it was a very, very shocking um, situation. And I also, I was ex extremely ill at the time. I, I was beginning to waste away uh, because my body was just not uh, producing any nutrients at all. Um, because of the diabetes, so I lost a lot of weight, and uh, I, I just felt horrible, horribly sick. In the beginning, uh, right after being diagnosed, I, I had to uh, find a physician because at the time I, I, I wasn't seeing a regular physician because I had moved here from out of the area. Um, and uh, along with that was uh, attempting to learn what a diabetic diet was, what I could and couldn't eat. Um, medications were uh, difficult in the beginning because um, we just couldn't find the right medication that would work for me. And um, so, and on top of that, feeling, feeling very ill, um, all this was just a big challenge. So as, as I got squared away with a physician, with medication, going to a um, diabetic educator, I began to learn how to eat and, and the medication began to uh, it control my diabetes and and eventually I began to um, regain my health and um, uh, that was a, a big challenge at that time. Uh, I think just over time learning every day is a learning experience and um, reading uh, material such as uh, um, the magazine put out by the ADA, I think it's Diabetes Forecast, and uh, also a publication called Di Diabetes Health, which it's called now. Um, just reading things, learning things, um, and um, you know, learning that I could eat, and I, I could eat very normally. In the beginning, I thought that I couldn't eat any carbs, so I ate like meat and salad was my three meals a day. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, what's probably helped the most is being going back to seeing a diabetic educator, and and at the time, I had to do this on my own. Um, my physician really, although he was in tune with my care, he didn't, he never really recommended that I go see, you know, somebody. Um, so through the, through seeing a, a diabetic educator from time to time uh, helped because it gave us an eating plan. I, I say us because my wife would go to any appointments with me. Um, so it gave me an eating plan. It, it, it opened up areas that I didn't know about. And um, so, you know, that's helped me a lot. And I think that 
now I utilize a diabetic educator more than ever uh, because I, I really feel that that's my connection between how to manage my, my uh, diabetes. Um, from there I'm able to give information to my physician and that my physician listens to me and therefore I'm able to, to treat my diabetes in a healthy way. I did experience fear. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my whole family has diabetes. Um, <clears throat> my father died of diabetic complications at the age of 56. And I experienced his uh, health problems. He had eventually was a bilateral um, amputee. He had uh, heart failure. He had he had a, his eyesight was going bad and and I saw him go downhill and a lot of it was because he was non-compliant but a lot of it was because of the poor education or lack of education that he never received in in the mid 60s and uh, through the 70s so that was one of my fears is to re reliving all the things that he went through I also experienced, um, I, I went through a bout of depression that I, I didn't know was there until my wife was able to open my eyes about it and then through the, the diabetic educator, educator that I was seeing, uh, she recommended <clears throat> someone here in the community and um, seeing him uh, help me get over that period um, of depression at that time and it, it, it involved a lot of subjects not necessarily only diabetes but um, as we learn today that depression is, is an issue with diabetics and it's not only one time it can it can come and go various times so um, I think recognizing that helps me um, get out of those funks when I'm in them. I, I think one of the difficulties has been um, weight management was a barrier and trying to get a real, get on to an eating plan that helped me uh, keep my weight in check. and. Uh, which after eight years I'm finally doing now <laughs> and I'm doing it successfully and um, um, but j just uh, barriers would are there are social barriers there are there are you know interaction barriers with other with other people that are non-diabetics um, the just the routines and and everything that the day in day in and day out uh, life that we live as diabetics um, sometimes can be a barrier in itself it's just to being a, a able to deal with that on day in and day out but I say right I say that now um, I I don't um, I don't feel that I have uh, my barriers are minimal, I think. When something isn't working well and I have to change medications, that, that really puts me through the ringer because I, uh, I'm very sensitive to medications and I, it takes me a, a, a while to, to really adapt to one or one that fits me. Um, and um, that's one of the complexities also. Um, Sometimes um, I, the, the way I feel through the course of the day and when I have to eat, um, I, I have breakfast early in the morning around 7 o'clock. By 10 o'clock, I have to have a snack. It doesn't matter where I am. I have to have something. So, and by noon, I have to have lunch. Um, and those are my critical periods 
by the late afternoon, I can have a, a snack of, of a, an apple or a, a granola bar or something like that. But I feel fairly well, and I can have dinner at, at a late hour at some times. Um, but it's, it's that morning to noon period where I just feel so fragile and, and if I don't have my food sources, um, I start to go downhill real quick. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's nothing that anyone else can, or non-diabetic can experience. Um, and even another diabetic may not have the same reaction as I do, but it's a, it's a real, real thing. And uh, um, yeah, along with that, I can have the you know irritableness and things like that and I um, which I don't like to to bark at my wife or other people <laughs> when I'm in those lows but um, I, that's one of the things that really is is really critical with me and um, and it doesn't change it's it's there you know and uh, so I, I I have to deal with that every day. Um, I, well, a lot of it is the support of uh, my family and other peers that are, are diabetic and non-diabetic, recognizing that I, that I am a diabetic. <clears throat> and they don't try to sh shoo me into the closet. We're, they're pretty open about it and as, as well as I am. And, um, <clears throat> of course, having a good understanding and a um, communicative rapport with my physician. And also um, being able to see uh, my uh, diabetic educator on a, a regular basis, uh, which I've done this year, um, that's been very successful. And also, um, um, oh, just just following, adhering to, I'm going to call them the diabetic rules of testing, taking medications regularly, uh, exercising, um, getting good good rest, um, having enjoyment times, and. Uh, um, taking diabetic holidays, which which I I do sometimes, uh, usually on a Saturday, um, and 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 knowing that uh, diabetes, the research is changing on a daily basis. Not that I'm going to be cured of diabetes. That isn't what I'm seeking, but I just. Uh, know that I can live a long and healthy life and be um, happy and I can feel well and be a diabetic. <laughs>